let's see about oral submucous fibrosis oral submucous fibrosis is a chronic insidious process in which there is deposition of fibrous tissue in the oral cavity and the pharynx as the name suggests it is submucous fibrosis because of the deposition of fibrous tissue in the oral cavity and the pharynx this most commonly occurs due to betel nut chewing this is the most important and the most common etiological factor for the development of oral submucous fibrosis let's see the etiologies first is socio economic status oral submucous fibrosis is more commonly seen in lower socio economic status because they are at a higher risk of precancerous lesions next is tobacco chewing areca nut alcohol is also one of the etiological factor it increases the risk of the development of oral submucous fibrosis by two fold next is other some nutritional deficiencies like vitamins and micronutrients it is also considered to be an immune process especially cell mediated immune response can also lead to development of oral submucous fibrosis so these are all the etiological factors for the development of submucous fibrosis coming to the pathogenesis as it is believed to be an immune mediated process especially t cell mediated immune response cellular immune response because of the betel nut chewing or areca nut chewing this leads to collection of t lymphocytes and macrophages in the sub epithelial layers then there is activation of t lymphocytes and also macrophages these activated t lymphocytes also stimulate the formation of more macrophages further these activated t lymphocytes cause decreased production of anti fibrotic substances and they also cause increased production of fibrinogenic factors so because of the decreased production of the anti fibrotic substances there is production of less collagenase and these increased production of fibrogenic factors they act on the mesenchymal cells which causes proliferation of fibroblasts 
and there is increased production of collagen and this less collagenase also contributes for the increased production of collagen because of the increased production of collagen there is fibrosis in the submucosal region this is the pathogenesis of oral submucous fibrosis and these macrophages they also cause increased production of fibrogenic factors and the whole process continues in pathology of submucous fibrosis there is fibro elastotic transformation of the connective tissues and also there is epithelial atrophy this is considered to be a pre malignant condition that is it can predispose to the development of carcinoma it can be associated with leukoplakia and squamous cell carcinoma next coming to the clinical factors clinical features of oral submucous fibrosis the clinical features include it is more common in the age group of 20 to 40 years because these age groups are more vulnerable to aricanet and tobacco chewing especially in males so the symptoms include initially there is intolerance to chilies and spices spicy food spicy food intolerance then there is constant burning sensation in the mouth which is worsen during meals also there is repeated vesicular formation then there is trismus that is difficulty in mouth opening and also there is difficulty in protrusion of tongue these are the clinical features that is the symptoms of oral submucous fibrosis next coming to the findings in the early stages the findings include there is redness that is patchy and formation of vesicles which rupture to form superficial ulcers this is the findings in the early stage then in the late stage in late stage there is development of fibrosis in the submucosal layers and there is blanching of mucosa presence of fibrotic bands trismus which is progressive in nature 
so these are all the early findings and late findings and these findings are more commonly seen on the soft palate and the tonsillar pillars and the buccal mucosa next coming to the treatment treatment of submucous fibrosis there's medical treatment in the early stages or surgical treatment in the late stages the medical treatment includes giving steroids topically so topical injection of steroids are given which is combined with hyalase hyalase causes breakdown of collagen fibers so it is combined with hyalase that is hyaluronic acid next is avoiding the irritant factors like tobacco arika nut spicy foods etc next because there can be some nutritional deficiencies we should treat the nutritional deficiencies by supplementing with iron if there is anemia or vitamins in case of vitamin deficiencies and we should advise some jaw opening exercises this is the medical treatment coming to the surgical treatment surgery is indicated in advanced cases mainly to treat trismus to relieve the trismus trismus is nothing but restricted opening of mouth so the surgeries include simple release of fibrosis and skin grafting or bilateral tongue flaps next is nasolabial flaps surgical excision and buccal fat pad graft superficial temporal fascia flap and split skin graft all these are some of the methods for surgical treatment of oral submucous fibrosis so this is all about oral submucous fibrosis thank you